Hello, welcome to Miniature Realms. My name is Stuart, and this video is a little bit about the journey I'm going on creating a Britannian army for the upcoming Warhammer The Old World from Games Workshop. I've worked on a number of videos recently linked to Warhammer Fantasy. One sort of dating back and talking about my nostalgia for the game and about how the excitement for Warhammer The Old World has really kind of reignited those things and learning the game again with my, my, my son, my eldest, who's only eight, but he's getting the grips of, of playing the 6th edition rules, which I've decided is the set that I'm going to start him on. Um, and we've had some good fun playing some sort of very small games, and he's absolutely loving playing his Orcs and Goblins. Has him in fits of laughter, and he's very much enjoying getting into the hobby. I also did a video on 3D printing an army, a lovely dwarf army from Highlands Miniatures. Talked a little bit about the style of those miniatures and how I went about it and have also done a painting tutorial for a couple of those as well. And then most recently, I've done a painting tutorial for a Bretonian peasant bowman. And I picked this miniature up. With the growing news around the old world, it became apparent that Bretonians were going to feature quite heavily earlier on. Well, at least it was a, a safe assumption to make. There's been rumours for quite a while now that Bretonians and Tunekins would make up some kind of starter box, starter set, um, or at least be heavily focused on at the beginning of the launch of the new version of the rules. Now, while I'm working on my Dwarf Army, I know that I can't take that army to, to play at Warhammer World. And I recently took my son there and he absolutely loved the place and really wants to go back at some point, probably next year, when he's painted his army and play some games there and really have a sort of father and son day out. And I love going there. It's always fun walking around the miniatures displays and the atmosphere there is usually pretty good. And they sell nice beer as well, which is always good. Now his army is all official Games Workshop stuff for Orcs and Goblins, but my Dwarves would not be allowed in there, and fair enough, they're not made by Games Workshop. So I knew I was going to have to collect at least a second army, and I do have plans for a few along the way, Empire being one of them. It's one of my loves for the game, and was one of my biggest armies towards the end of the 8th edition before I stopped playing. And I also bought a Bretonian army towards the end of that edition, but never got it painted and never played, and ended up selling it on before it hit the table. So with the mix of rumours that Bretonians would be involved at the start and that hankering to do some work on a Bretonian army at some point in my hobby life, I decided to have a look on eBay and see what I could find. And I really wanted to pick up new miniatures on sprue, all very, very good condition. I don't mind stripping some miniatures, but I wanted to do some videos with these, so I wanted to make sure that the, the quality was fairly high. So first off, I managed to find a set without a box, but in good condition on sprue of Peasant Bowman. And this was a set of 16, all new on sprue. I'd say they're multi-part. Um, they're not fully poseable multi-part. You're really just attaching heads and things like that. But they're pretty characterful. And I think they still stand up fairly well. So I thought, why not paint up initial set of 16? It can't hurt. I don't know much about the game, but at least I'm starting an army that will be able to be used at Warhammer World. Now, around this time, there were plenty of rumours about potential of increase in base sizes. Players of fantasy will know that many of the sculpts really struggle to fit on their existing base sizes in the previous editions. So when it comes to ranking up units, it was almost impossible sometime, which led to some sort of really, really janky models on rocks just so that their axe didn't get in the way of the model in the rank in front. And it was a big mess sometimes. Now, this wasn't for all sculpts, but definitely caused issues. And there was lots of speculation about the, the base sizes increasing. And then on the 14th of April, Games Workshop released it, the latest at that time development diary for the old world. They do these sporadically. They tend to be almost monthly at the moment. And it gave a little bit of further background on some Bretonian miniatures, showed them in a new paint scheme, and also showed them on newer, slightly larger bases and talked a little bit about that. And this article confirmed that all miniatures that were previously on 20mm square bases would move up to 25mm squares. It mentions that other things were changing as well. We'll come back to that a little bit later. But I knew I needed 25 mil squares for these new miniatures. I hadn't built them yet, so I ordered some from eBay and along I went. Now I also noticed that the images in the article showed a very large unit of peasant bowmen in four ranks. And I thought, mm, I wonder if that's just for show or whether it's going to be part of the rules that they can fire in four ranks. And I was thinking about it and thought that it was fairly illustrative 
um, of the way that, that, that bowmen may work, firing in mass ranks, volleys over the heads of their troops and things, and it got me thinking. And then while looking at the other pictures as well, it showed the knights in an old-fashioned lance formation, um, and then it also showed the men-at-arms in three ranks, but only six wide as well. And it, and it showed the unit twice like that. And I thought that this could just be for photography, but I got a feeling that what's in those images maybe illustrates how the game might well look um, in the new version. So I thought I'm gonna take a risk, and it's not a big risk, create a big unit of bowmen just like in that picture. So I saw some 25 by 100 bases as well for the defensive stakes that go at the front of the unit. It shows that they'll be in the new edition. I also saw stout some extra miniatures to take that unit of 16 up to a unit of 32. Now I'm hoping that's about the largest of unit games in the new edition because some of the big units in hordes before were a little bit unwieldy. But I thought it looked quite impressive. So I got a mixture of new miniatures and also a few of the 4th edition miniatures from the starter set back them for Bowman just to mix in between, fill out the unit a little bit. Um, and then I made a little bit of a unit filler as well and you'll be seeing pictures of that throughout the video. Now I always enjoyed using unit fillers in my units in 7th and 8th edition, especially the really large ones. It saved your painting maybe 5 or, or 10 miniatures if you had a big chunk in the middle. Now I didn't want to go overboard here, but in my unit of 32, I had a strip that would have been four miniatures and I essentially turned it into one. I put a couple of bits of fencing down and a few supplies as if they're in the, the middle of the, the unit of Bowman. Um, maybe where they keep their wine and beer and things like that, I sort of figured they'll be at the back of the, the, the army line in front of the baggage or something like that. And they're having a few drinks as they fire their arrows over into the enemy. Now that's very far-fetched and not realistic at all, but it's a good bit of fun and it adds a little bit of character to the unit. I couldn't quite finish building this unit at this time. I still had a few bits in the post to come, including some movement trays. But I did a painting tutorial on one of the peasant bowmen, which helped me lock down my colour scheme for the army. While I was waiting, I moved on to some of my other purchases. Now, I mentioned that I saw those units of men-at-arms that were 18 in a unit in three ranks of six. I managed to find on eBay a battered but new box of men-at-arms, of which you get 16 in a box, so technically I was too short. Now, again, taking massive gambles that those pictures on that article illustrate the size of unit that may be used in the game. I may need to add more. I'm well aware of that, but I thought I'll take the risk and, and see if there's a reason why they've been displayed like that. Now, obviously, these miniatures are now 25 mil base wide rather than 20, so your frontage may well be a little bit lower. So maybe the six is the new horde rules for the width of this, these armies, or maybe four is a rank, who knows? But they looked cool and there was two of them in the picture. So again, I thought I'd try and recreate it. And so I set to work building these and, and getting them set up. And again, I also did a very small unit filler to make up for the two miniatures I didn't have, rather than paying some silly overinflated eBay prices for single miniatures, which could set me back sort of seven or eight pounds, which is absolutely ridiculous. I decided to create a little unit filler in the middle. Now, this time I wanted them to look a little bit more mobile rather than them having loads and loads of supplies up against a fence or something. So I opted for a mule, and this is a very, very old um, Games Workshop miniature. It's from the 1983 C25 Animals set. It's now available via Foundry under the Beasts of Burden, but it is an ex-Citadel miniature. It's very, very basic. It's in old, full lead, as far as I can tell. I've had it in my bits box for years. It's very, very cute, a little mule, um, lots of baggage and things, and I thought it would be a nice mascot to the regiment and, and also mobile rather than being... Now added to that, uh, I added a, a dog miniature that you also get on the sprue, and I just thought it added a little bit of character, and again saved me having to buy two miniatures to finish this little mini project. Now, as I've said, this is jumping the gun completely. When the rules come out, I may not want them in this formation, but I really wanted to create a little mini force ready for launch that was fully painted and, and, and looked ready, even if I had to change it later on. 
So again, I built all of those and I was waiting for my movement trays to arrive and I decided to do a test paint on one of the miniatures. Now this hasn't become a painting tutorial. The, the techniques used in it are so similar to the peasant bowman that I thought it'd be too repetitive. Um, and, and most people will easily be able to work out the way I did it just by watching that tutorial instead. But I did a test miniature to see how it looked. So while I was waiting, there was lots of continued speculation online and there still is about what the other base sizes may be. I mentioned that uh, many 25 millimeter bases would increase in size as well, including the 25 by 50 cavalry bases. Some of those would, would increase as well. Now, a quick look at the bases on the knights in the article showed that they were clearly bigger than the standard 25 by 50 for cavalry. And again, that's a good thing. These knights don't rank up front to back on the, the 25 by 50 mil. The noses and the tails already clipped together. Um, and these aren't the worst example. I know chaos knights and, and, and many, many other things just don't rank up at all. And people are having to do all kinds of jiggery pokery just to get them to work for a, in, in a game to play. Now, there have been lots of rumours online about what the other base sizes may or may not be, and 30 by 60 kept coming up as a, a solution to the 25 by 50, and it seemed to, to be fairly logical looking at the increase from the 20 to 25. I have some 30 by 60 millimetre bases that I use for another thing, so I placed my knights, which I managed to find on eBay. Yes, another quick purchase that uh, these were ready assembled and they did require some cleaning up they are glued to the horses which will make them slightly tricky to paint but they were in relatively good condition and to have bought an open unopened box on sprue we were talking silly 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 money we were hundreds of pounds just for for six miniatures which is no way i was going to do that especially when they're clearly all going to become coming back on sale soon but i found these for a price that was acceptable and um, I, I ranked them up on the 30 by 60 millimeter bases, compared them to the picture. And when you take into account the slight angle that you get on the Games Workshop style bases, I thought that it was almost likely that these were the, the new sizes. Maybe they'll differ by a millimeter or so. Maybe they're 62 by um, 32 or something like that. That's not impossible, I suppose. We're only looking at images, but 60 by 30 seems pretty good. And um, the rumors, enough rumors online to make me think, you know what, I'm going to go for it. Now, I know I should have waited, and I know there'll be people rolling their eyes watching this video and thinking, why didn't I just wait until the base sizes are released, paint them as they are, and, and, and base them when they turn up? But I really wanted to do this kind of mini force, which you'll see at the end. Um, all set out and ready to go and give myself the challenge of, of painting sort of three complete units so that I've keep the ground running once the game is released. Um, I realised by taking the risk on these mounted knights that I may have to rebase them anyway. And if I do, we're only going to be looking at remounting six mon miniatures. So it's, it's, it's not going to hurt me too much. Now, I didn't want to use MDF bases, which have been the easiest way to get the, the right sort of size of bases in this sense. I really wanted them to look like Games Workshop bases with that slight angled edge. Um, I searched online for STLs and I just couldn't find any. No one had done them already. So I was chatting to my friend Dan and he said, why don't you just knock one up in Tinkercad on the iPad? I know that he, he had used it before for a couple of little things. I'd heard about it. I thought, well, it's a free app to download. I'll give it a go. I wasn't too confident about being able to do it. And I'm not brilliant at that kind of stuff. But I did. And I was able to, um, after a few mistakes of getting measurements and things wrong, I was able to come up with a 30 by 60 or 60 by 30 millimeter rectangular base that looked there or thereabouts right to fit in with the GW style of bases. So I exported it as an STL and I loaded it up into Chitu Box, expecting it not to work. But the file loaded fine so i thought we'll do a test print and they printed absolutely fine as well now these are solid they're not hollowed um, i haven't got the skills to design them properly like that i don't know if the program can do it probably i'm so new to printing and, and things i was just relieved that i actually managed to produce something in the right size and shape that actually printed but i was able to print some bases and i mounted my miniatures on them 
So at this stage, I was still waiting for those few last bits to turn up. So I started to look at heraldry. I decided that I wanted to keep my force open to be used in, in any kind of conflict. And I quite like the idea of, uh, of an exiled knight or a shamed baron or lord that maybe has to go and live in the border princes or away on some kind of campaign that doesn't fall within the remit of the, the fixed providences. So I looked at some decals and things that I had, looked online, couldn't find any medieval ones that I wanted to use. So I searched through my old collection and having had a imperial fist horse heresy army, I still had quite a lot left. And what I was really after is the kind of Templar style crosses, which you get all over it. And if you're not familiar with 40k and 30k law, um, the imperial fists have Templars. So while I continued to wait for those bits, I decided to paint at one night and do my test model for that as well. Now, I haven't recorded a painting tutorial for this because I just wanted to enjoy painting it and test it out first. But I will no doubt return and do a tutorial for this one. Um, if you'd like to see that, do let me know in the comments. I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm going to do it anyway. But if enough people are, are interested, I may push it up the, uh, the, the to do list slightly. And once he was painted, I started to mess around with the decals and I put them on the, the shields, but also added them to the shield of my men at arms as well, keeping it quite subtle in the, the top right hand corner as you look at the miniature. So then my movement trays arrived and at the same time, one of my other eBay purchases arrived, which is a old fine cast trebuchet. And this was a good quality example. I'm not a huge hate. I quite like resin miniatures. I'm not a huge hater of all things fine cast. Some miniatures were absolutely awful and they just didn't come out very, very well. Other miniatures, which are a bit of a nightmare to put together when metal, something like the trebuchet, um, I'd much prefer in a resin. And I'm pretty happy with the quality of this set. And I'm glad it's in, in, in a resin rather than in a fine cast so i set about cleaning this up it came prime white it did a little bit of cleaning and, and popping the miniatures on their bases now what it left me with is this little force so we have the units of peasant bowmen 32 of them with the defensive stakes a unit of 18 men at arms a unit of six knights of the realm shown in the formation that looks like it's returning and a trebuchet um, and they're not in picture I have a couple of plastic knights to convert into a battle standard bearer and in the post winging its way to me I have a metal damsel as well and that will actually make with magical items a little thousand point force based on the, the the current army book which was a sixth seventh and eighth edition rule book but um, army book because it wasn't updated in those later editions. So while I'm playing small games with my son at the moment, using basically the 6th edition rules that I'm sure we're going to change and adjust things more, especially if we find out rules are changing with the old world, if they make any announcements that pre-measuring is in, then I will start using pre-measuring in the game to help him get used to it. Um, but it will give me a, a thousand point little list that I can also play against his um, orcs and goblins army now at that stage they are still in the old 20 millimeter basis so that might need adjusting um, but most of all i feel like i've got this nice little starter force which i'm not really planning on anything extra to now because i don't know what the rules are going to do um, i feel like they're fairly safe choices i made at the moment the worst case scenario i'm going to have to do is use a different size movement tray because the units will be different size than i wanted um, and maybe rebase those knights but um, i'm not going to bet loads on it but i'm pretty sure 30 by 60 is going to be extremely close if not spot on now i've been having loads of fun doing this it's definitely helping me temper my excitement a little bit towards the old world which for all i know could still be a full year off i've got loads of projects to do so you won't be seeing a video in two weeks time with all of this fully painted at least i don't think you will i don't know where that time would come from and it will be really nice when that game launches to know I've got a core done. And there's so much rumour around. We've just got past Warhammer Fest. And I won't go into too much of the detail there. But it looks fairly confirmed that Tomb Kings and Britannians are going to be the launch factions that get the most focus at the start. There's some discussion around what style of starter box, if there is one. It does look like if there is some kind of starter element that 
you may well find some of the miniatures in this image now on the screen are the ones that will come in that and no doubt I will need an extra unit of Ralph Knights of the Realm and I will definitely need another unit of Men at Arms so being able to buy a starter box and maybe only needing one rather than the two you often end up buying um, will be nice and to have a around a thousand points in, in old fantasy money ready to go will be a, a nice place and I can go and spend some time and some money on the, the newer miniatures and, and what we've seen so far they look very very exciting so let me know what you think in the comments who else is preparing miniatures ready for the old world who's rebasing now and who's not i'm kind of in a little bit of a quandary with what to do with the existing projects my dwarves are on 20s that's easy they'll all move to 25 the headache I have is my son's yet mostly unpainted army of orcs and goblins are on a mixture of 20s and 25s. We know that the goblins on 20s are going to move to 25s. That's not a problem. It's about what we do with the orcs and um, whether to change them now. Uh, I quite like the idea of being able to change them all now, ready to go. So he's painting them and we don't have to rebase them once they're painting. That seems logical. And we can continue to use our version of 6th because if we're both using the same basing structure. It really, really doesn't matter. It works within the game fine. Yes, there'll be a slight skew with template weapons and things. But if it's the same for both sides, not an issue. The minor headache we'll have is if the, we change his goblins and I'm using everything resized to 25s, but his orcs are still on 25 and maybe they should be on 30s but again I'm playing against a, an eight-year-old at home um, in my office it probably doesn't matter and we'll probably plow ahead and, and rebase them but what are you guys doing uh, maybe you're playing in in wargaming clubs and things like that for fantasy something I'm not doing at this moment in time so that becomes a little bit more confusing and problematic then when you're playing pick up games against people you've got groups of people where some want to rebase some don't some want to wait it's a little bit easy for me to make a decision so i'd be interested to, to know what your experiences are for that for those of you who've been watching all of the warhammer fantasy stroke old world related videos on the channel thanks very much for your comments and, and things so far i know a few of you have requested painting tutorials i have logged them in my list i will look at doing those i'm really enjoying painting sort of single fantasy miniatures mainly aimed at rank and um, file miniatures i think that's a, a good fun thing to do so i will do some others of those like i said i'll probably do one of these mounted knights of the realm as a tutorial because that'll be good fun um, but I'm also going to look at doing some other things as well. I've got um, some Empire um, State Troops to do, so I will probably do a painting tutorial for one of those. That will be good fun. I've got some Night Goblins. I know someone's requested Goblins, so I will no doubt do a Night Goblin as well. And there may well be other things that come up in the request pile. If you want to hear a little bit more um, old world chatter based on the announcements at Warhammer Fest, my friend Dan and I have recently started a podcast which we're hosting on this channel on Miniature Realms called The Hobby Hour. And the second episode, which will be out a few days after this video, is going to be talking a lot about the announcements at Warhammer Fest, at least for the games we are interested in. I'm not really a 40k player, which seems to be the bulk of what's there, but I like Middle Earth Strategy Battle Game and The Old World. And it seems to be a tease of an epic, so we will touch on those things, as well as a wider discussion on what we look for in big wargaming shows and events that covers things like Salute and things as well. So do look out for that and check it out if you want to hear more on that discussion. But if you have enjoyed the video, please do consider giving us a like. It really helps the video out seen by others and let me know you're enjoying it. And if you are new to the channel, please do consider looking at the other videos. There might be stuff you enjoy. And if you do, maybe consider subscribing as well. Thank you very much for watching. Take care and I'll catch you soon.